there, everybody. Welcome to uh, Wednesday Night in the Word. I'm Pastor Rick in Haverhill, Mass. At New Life Christian Assembly of God. Uh, greetings to everyone. I think I see a big long prayer request here. All right, anyway, uh, I'm going to probably maybe conduct this a little bit different tonight. I uh, want to greet everybody on there. I'm not going to take time individually tonight, uh, at least not at the moment. Um, Good to see people on here near and far, and uh, I'll get to those comments in a few minutes, but <clears throat> I guess I've had a difficult day today uh, because we got word uh, this morning that our friend Gary Feldman uh, really has taken a turn for the worse, and um, he, he, he is in New Jersey. He was going back and forth to New York for treatments at this specialist for his um, liver cancer. He was there previously during the summer for his kidney uh, cancer, I believe it was. So <clears throat> anyway, the cancer has spread very, very badly. And um, it's basically shut down his liver and his kidneys. And uh, it, it even has uh, grown to be in his brain. So uh, he's on life support. Uh, the plan is to take him off of life support, probably, if they haven't done it already, either. I don't know if they would do it tonight or soon. And then um, it's 100% in the Lord's hands what's going to happen. Uh, so the doctors are not optimistic at all. Um, our hope is in the Lord. Uh, if Gary dies in the physical, he will live eternally in the spiritual. And for that, we say hallelujah. Death is swallowed up in victory. Um, as I was sharing with Joanne today, if, if the Lord takes him home, we say hallelujah. If the Lord heals him, we say hallelujah. Um, we've been praying for Gary and Joanne for about two years now. Uh, Joanne is still, uh, you know, got her health problems. And um, this, this is, is such an emotional burden for her. So anyway, I, I don't mean to be so heavy hearted, but you know, Gary, um, Gary, you know, Gary is a, a unique individual. He came to our church maybe, what, four or five years ago now, maybe. Um, very uh, integral part of our worship team, great singer, great musician, uh, great heart for the Lord, a great sense of humor. Uh, Gary uh, is a Jewish believer. He, he was raised in the Jewish family. Uh, everyone in his family is Jewish, but he accepted Jesus as his Messiah. I'm not sure when exactly. I'd say maybe 20, 25 years ago. Um, and he's been on a journey ever since. So anyway, I um, want to start out by praying for Gary and for Joanne. And um, we have a few more people to pray for as well. Um, you know, Stacy Amendola Johnson has had double pneumonia, uh, one broken rib, two cracked ribs. Uh, Stacy could have died about two weeks ago. I, <laughs> the doctor said, it's so good you came in here. And Stacy said, well, it's so good that you let me come in here because for a long time the, the office wouldn't let her come in. Uh, but anyway, glad she got the medical care, but glad the Lord intervened. Uh, so I want to pray for Stacy. I want to pray for Raquel uh, Centeno. Raquel, uh, I didn't know, uh, was in a, had a concussion recently and was also dealing with COVID. And I think she went to the hospital, and when she did, she, she got MRSA, really terribly bad. MRSA is a skin disease, and uh, it's really been very bad for her. So we want to pray for Raquel. I want to pray for Gina Fernandez's daughter, Marie, that, that has also been given a very short period of time to live. I'm not sure exactly what the issues are there, but I want to pray for Marie. Uh, Dolores uh, has given us some people to pray for, the Doe family and the Spalding family. And uh, Catherine Salucki, I, I sent this all out in an email earlier today. Um, uh, so Catherine was asking prayer for her godmother's son. 
and uh, her cousin and, and her sister as well, various uh, health issues there. So anyway, why don't we open up with a word of prayer. Uh, please join, let's join our hearts together. Um, and let's see, after this, I'll take a look at all the requests and everything, okay? I think that might be a good way to do it. All right, dear Father, Lord God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we plead your blood over this Wednesday night in the Word, Bible study, fellowship time, prayer time. We plead your blood over our lives, oh God. We pray for a cleansing, a purging, a, a covering. We pray, Lord, for, for forgiveness of anything that would be in the way. And we make our request known before you. Lord, specifically, we pray for Gary Feldman. Lord, the reports I heard today are not good at all in the natural. Lord, if it's your time to take Gary home, we rejoice and we applaud that. Hallelujah. But we do pray for his healing. Lord, we pray for his healing. We pray for life. We pray that whatever's wrong, that he would get the help that he needs. We pray, Lord, for the doctors to have great skill and understanding and wisdom to know what to do to help him. And uh, we leave Gary in your hands. Lord, I'm so glad I got it, had a chance to pray with him today and uh, share the word of God with him over the phone. I pray, Lord, that he could hear me, and I pray that, uh, I just pray, Lord, that, he, that it is well with his soul. We pray for Joanne, Lord, touch her, strengthen her during this uh, hour of trial that she's in, bring healing to her body, soul, and spirit, and Lord, with this uh, additional situation, we just pray, Lord, that you would strengthen her like never before. Let, let her realize this is her time to be the strongest she's ever been in her life in you. So thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, we do pray for Stacy tonight for healing of not only the pneumonia, double pneumonia, but healing of these cracked ribs and broken ribs to be healed and strengthened. And Lord, just encourage her uh, emotionally as well. It's been a tough month or longer, six weeks or longer than that even. We just pray, Lord, for Stacy to be well. Let her medications work well and uh, let, her, let her recovery be total and, and full and complete and let her get back to the worship team really soon and back to her life in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Raquel uh, this evening. We pray for our dear sister, Lord, healing of this concussion, healing of COVID for her and her family. We pray, Lord, for this MRSA that has really been debilitating for her. Let her be well. Let her body fight it off. We call upon your name, Lord, to give her the strength and blessing and encouragement that she needs uh, to overcome this particular problem. Keep her faith strong too, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Gina Fernandez's daughter, Marie, for healing. We, we heard a report today. She's got a few days to live unless you intervene, Lord. So, Lord, we just call upon your name to touch this uh, young lady, bring healing and strength to her in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for uh, Dolores' prayer request for the Doe family and for the uh, Spalding family. I believe uh, Ken is uh, close to meeting you, so we just pray your blessing upon his transition uh, into everlasting life. May your blessing be over the families as well, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for with Catherine uh, Selucky tonight uh, for her godmother's son, for her cousin, for her sister, all the physical ailments and problems that are going on. We just pray your blessing, your healing, your comforter to be with them. Uh, Lord, I believe her sister is pregnant with their first baby, so bless her and her husband and, and uh, let that pregnancy go very, very well. So, Lord, uh, we pray your blessing over our study tonight. Bless our time of fellowship. Uh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome to come do your work among us. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All righty. Well, I'm going to go back and just say hello. So let me just take a minute here. Hello, Danica. Hello, Kaylee down in Florida. Hey, Tony down in Jersey. Hey, Catherine. Good to see you. Jerry. Um, Jer uh, Jeannie. Jeannie. Sorry. I thought that was uh, Jeannie. Good to see you down in Thompson, Connecticut. David Brissett. God bless you. Uh, Gene Eaton. How you doing? Brother Jesus. God bless you. Uh, Lorinda, God bless you. Good to see you here. And Sandy. Uh, Maleda, good to see you tonight. God bless you and your family. Hope you're all doing better. Uh, Pauline, good to see you. God bless you here. Stacy, good to see you, Stacy, on here with all your little hearts. We love you too. Uh, let's see, James has a prayer request, right? 
Okay. I'm just reading this now, James. You have a situation where someone's asking you to take in your a teenage niece of yours that's gone through a lot. Mm. Yes. We, uh, we, let's pray for James and Danica right now. Father, we pray, Lord, that uh, this opportunity, uh, if this is meant for them to seize this moment, to take in a, a teenage niece with uh, the trouble she's been through. We don't know all the details, but Lord, give James and Danica great wisdom and courage and strength and all that's involved. Let them know, Lord, should they do this or not? So we just ask you, Lord, show them the way. And we pray your blessing over this niece anyway. Uh, let her be okay and let her, let her find the, the appropriate place to live. If it's up here in Haverhill, Lord, let it be clear for James and Danica. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Alinda, good to see you. Oh, yeah, Adrian, that's right. Our brother Adrian is going through his chemo, different things. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Adrian, Lord, for his cancer to be gone, for the procedures to, to do what they're supposed to do, for the any... Uh, chemo or radiation to work well with his body. Lord God, heal him, strengthen him, encourage him during this time. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for your grace upon his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, James, you know what? If you were to do this, uh, you would have your church family. And I, I know, you know, it's a little different than your own flesh and blood, but... Um, you know, we would do our best to support you in that. Uh, hey, Jerry, there you are. Good to see you. Um, oh, Pamela just sent me more info. Okay, so the latest on Gary is that he's on a ventilator with the, with the tube down his throat. And uh, Joanne will be the one to make the call if, if they're going to uh, take him off of life support. I guess that hasn't been done yet. Gary's sister and niece will be flying up to, 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 um, to be with her so, and to comfort her. and to be, I guess be with Gary, too. Let's pray for Joanne to have the right have the wisdom to make the right call on that one. Father, we pray for Joanne. Lord, this is a very, very heavy burden she's carrying. And Lord, she's got her own problems right now, but we pray that she would have clarity of mind and spirit to know what to do about uh, taking Gary off the ventilator or not. Lord, let her have, let her hear your voice. Lord, speak to her in such a clear way that she would know. And Lord, uh, bless my conversation with her later on tonight as well. Uh, Lord, use me if you want to, to speak to her about this. But we just pray for your guidance and your wisdom tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Hey, it's, it's Amar. Good to see you. Angela, good to see you. Uh, let's see. We've got 25 people on here, so that's pretty good. Um, all right. So I think we're okay. Oh, it's Amar. Uh, it's Amar's son, has an appointment tomorrow to see a doctor about his club feet. Okay. Please pray that the treatment goes well and is successful. He'll need a brace. All right. Father, we just pray for this little boy in the name of Jesus. Thank you that he's healthy otherwise. Uh, bless the family. Keep them healthy and strong. But Lord, give the doctors great wisdom <coughs> to know what to do about this situation. And... Um, be with Itzamar as she navigates these waters as well. So thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, let's see, where are we here? Okay. Hey, Millie Cobbett, good to see you. God bless you. Denora, good to see you. Um, Annie, good to see you too. God bless you. Uh, Sandy Gary Feldman is in New Jersey in a hospital in Summit, New Jersey, getting all the care he can get. All right, I think we're pretty caught up here. Yeah, 
Okay, so if you missed the announcement, Gary Feldman is very close to meeting Jesus. He's had some, he has liver failure, kidney failure, brain cancer. He's on a ventilator, and he's in New Jersey in a hospital. He was down there to go back and forth into Manhattan twice a week for treatments, but um, that's not happening. I guess the doctor saw him. Uh, I think he saw him last Tuesday and last Thursday, and last Thursday is probably when they discovered some stuff. And um, Gary's been in the hospital, I think, since Sunday or Monday. I found out today. All righty. Anyway, let's get into the Word. You know, the Word is... Uh, let me... Let's see. Let me show you something just uh, out of the blue here, just as a refresher. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is God breathed. All scripture is anointed and created by the, the word of God. You know, it's it, it, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, it, it's, it's, it's the breath of God. It's the spirit of God. It's profitable. Well, let me emphasize the word all. So when we get into Daniel chapter eight tonight, keep in mind all scripture because Daniel chapter eight is quite the challenge. But all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for in, uh, instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So uh, we're standing on that verse of scripture as we get into Daniel chapter 8. So take your Bibles and your, if you take notes or whatever you do. Um, I hope that you do, as a matter of fact, because we, we cover a lot of territory in these studies. Um, yes. Kaylee, we'll, we'll pray for you later in your new, your new schooling situation. That's great. That's exciting. You will do great. Absolutely. You have a great background. You have a good head on your shoulders, and you're gonna. You have Jesus in your heart, and you're gonna do great. Amen. Okay. All right. So Daniel chapter eight. Now we, we finished Daniel chapter seven last uh, last time, and uh, if you remember, Daniel chapters one through six is one thing, chapter seven through twelve is another thing. Uh, one through six are basically his whole lifespan. Uh, he wasn't always a teenager. By chapter 6, uh, he was probably in his 80s by that time. So the various episodes, the writing on the wall, the lion's den, um, and the fiery furnace, so those, those were during the course of his lifetime. So we have snippets of his life in chapters 1 through 6. Verses, I mean, chapters 7 through 12 are kind of intermingled in chapters 1 through 6 because these chapters talk about his dreams. And uh, as this was written... It was, it was kind of segregated that way to have his life in the first part, his dreams in the second part. So Daniel chapter 7, uh, we read in verse number 1, happened in the first year of King Belshazzar. But we know already from going through chapters 5 and 6 that he died already. But, but anyway, we're going back in time. Uh, Daniel 7 was his first year. Daniel chapter 8 is now in his third year. So um, in that third year was... Um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So um, let, me, let me just give you a kind of a, uh, an overview of this chapter, okay? Uh, as I began to study this today in, in the midst of all that I was dealing with, uh, the first thing I read about in, in this commentary I came across is that Daniel chapter 8 is every preacher's nightmare. I said, oh, great, of all days and nights, I got to be right here, but it's it's not it's not that bad. It's just that there there seems to be some uh, there there's not there's not a total agreement by everyone about what these things in this chapter uh, refer to and, and and what the timeline is. I, it's open to a little bit of discussion among the theological ranks, but I I realize. That, that that's okay, because uh, I, I was wondering how I would get into this, but here's a good point. Um, 
There are many things that, that Christians don't agree on, but they're not considered the essentials of the faith. You know, so we agree on the essentials, Christ's birth, the virgin birth, his life, his atoning work on Calvary, etc., etc., the word of God, you know, being inerrant and so forth, the second coming. We, we probably disagree <clears throat> on some things like when the rapture is going to take place. I mean, we agree there's going to be a rapture, but when? Pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, um, we uh, we may disagree on uh, oh I don't know um, you know certain application of various scriptures like like the timeline of Daniel chapter nine the seventy weeks for example but anyway it's okay to do that and I was thinking uh, I had a talk with Brother Seriano the other day uh, Brother Seriano is an expert in eschatology which is the study of the last days uh, we've had him at the church a few times he's a scholar. He's a scholar and a gentleman and a wonderful believer, but he's my go-to person when we get into these discussions. And my question to him was regarding 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 about <clears throat> the great falling away, the, the uh, man of perdition comes, <clears throat> and the Lord will put a deception over, the, over those that are left behind after the rapture that they will not be able to believe and follow the Lord at that point. It'll be too late. And uh, he, he said he heard that, too. He recently heard that teaching. And um, he, said, he said, what you have to remember is, first of all, people disagree on when the rapture is going to happen in the first place. Not every Christian believes in a pre-tribulation rapture. I personally do. I believe strongly in that. But not every Christian does. I, and I have to give that to them, and they have to give it to me, too. Uh, it's not an essential when the rapture happens. Uh, and in the same manner, it's not an essential to know if after the rapture, if those that heard the gospel and rejected it will have a second chance to receive it again. It's not an essential matter. I'm just curious. And so that, that was why I called Brother Siriano. He, so he started out by talking like that, and he brought up a very good point. Because in Revelation, if you remember, I think it's chapter 14, there, there will be 144,000 Jews that begin preaching, they accept Christ, they preach the word of God, and they preach to Israel. Well, so, you know, the tribulation is seven years long, so those 144,000 Jews had to be alive before the rapture came, or before the tribulation started, let, let me put it that way. So if they were alive, well, I'm, going, I'm coming from a pre-tribulation point of view, so if, they're, if they were alive before the rapture and before the tribulation, they had a, an opportunity to receive Christ, and they didn't. But here they are, having received Christ, and they're preaching Christ. So that puts a little twist in it for me. I, I have not yet come to a conclusion as to that whole study. Are, is, are anyone following me? I, I hope I'm making sense. Uh, but anyway, um, now, now with the 144,000, someone could say, well, maybe there's a mid-tribulation rapture. And so the first three and a half years, maybe they, they got saved then. And then after the mid, then after that point, no one else could get saved that heard the gospel. So uh, it's just a, it's a great thing to talk about. It's a great thing to study. But it is not an essential. And that's where I feel relieved. I was kind of getting pressed <laughs> in my heart and spirit saying, I got to know the answer to this. And um, it may come down to you know, personal study and a matter of conviction as to how you feel about it. So anyway, so going back to Daniel chapter 8, uh, there are some, there's some disagreement on the timeline. But like I said, it's not an essential. I think we can learn a, enough from this to, to get a lot out of it tonight. Uh, so let me give you an overall view, okay? So Daniel chapter 8, go to the very last verse. Of Daniel chapter 8. After this whole, so this is his dream number two. Uh, verse number one says this is the third year of King Belshazzar. Uh, so it's two years after the first dream, which was in the first year. So now it's the third year. Um, you know, so Daniel has this dream. And, and, and at the end of all that, at verse 27, it says, I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. So the poor man, his response to this dream and interpretation 
it made him sick to his stomach and he fainted. It, it was just a difficult, difficult time. He says, I, afterwards I arose, I went about the king's business and went back to work. And uh, I was amazed, he said, by the vision, but nobody, no one understood it. And, and that's interesting because if you remember, um, let me go back to Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17. At the end of that verse, it says, Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And Daniel 5, 11 and 12, uh, where are we? We read this. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. And... Um, your, uh, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made him chief of the, all, the magi all the magicians and astrologers, Chaldeans and soothsayers. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this, Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, now let Daniel be called and let him give the interpretation. That's regarding the writing on the wall. But anyway, Daniel had a pristine um, reputation. He was known for his giftings from God to uh, interpret dreams and so forth. But after, after Daniel 8 and 27, even he was perplexed. And I throw on top of his ability to interpret dreams, um, <laughs> interesting here, look at verse number 15 and 16. Daniel 8, 15 and 16, because it says, It happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning. Suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. So I believe this was a vision of Jesus. And then he said, I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, that's a river, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So you have, a, in the middle of chapter 8, you have this thing where Daniel, he, he's asking, you know, he's looking for understanding. He sees the vision of someone who looked like a man, and the man said to angel Gabriel, hey, Gabriel, tell Daniel what this means. And, uh, <laughs> and Gabriel did, but Daniel still, uh, Gabriel did, but Daniel still did not fully grasp the meaning of what this meant was all about. Uh, last week, I think we shared some scriptures in the New Testament that Jesus said that the prophets longed to know the, the things that were being revealed in his life at that time. Peter wrote also in First Peter and Second Peter that um, you know the prophets gave these words that were magnificent, but they did not even understand really what they were talking about. That you know we're looking back on it, so it's relatively easier to see what they were talking about. They were just saying it for the first time. And so this is Daniel saying these things about kingdoms and uh, uh, um, symbolism and time frames and so forth. And, and uh, you know, it, 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 it made him sick to his stomach and he fainted. And then throw on top of this, uh, as is true in, in many um, prophecies, that there's definitely, in this case, in chapter 8, what's called the law of double reference, which means that, well, I have to explain this, it means that the prophecy has a double meaning. Usually, double reference means it's for the time right here as well as someplace in the future. But in this case, it's for two events in the future. So we're, the time frame of this, we're probably right now in around, I think, 550 be, uh, before Christ, B.C., and so the first reference that this is referring to takes place in, I believe it's the year 168 BC. So about 400 years, this is going to come to, come to pass. But that's still going to be 168 BC. This will also come to pass during the, the rule of the Antichrist. So you have, you have double reference. You have it, have it happening in the Old Testament and then it's going to happen in the future, future, um, you know, at the end of, at the end of the uh, end of time. So all that to say, uh, 
Very interesting chapter. Now you're probably wondering, what is this chapter all about? Um, incidentally, chapter 7 and verse 28, the end of that chapter, Daniel said, Daniel said, uh, my thoughts greatly troubled me regarding that uh, dream and interpretation. My countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Chapter 8, verse 27, he's saying, I'll just paraphrase it. I'm sick. I fainted. I talked to people. No one could understand it. Even after Gabriel talked to me, I still don't get it. And he's beside himself. And that's where, that's where that chapter ends, ends up. Okay, so let me give you an outline of the chapter. Three main characters in this, in this chapter. The ram, the male goat, and the little horn. So let me just say this to you. If you want to write it down, you can. If not, you can just listen to me. Um, verses 1 through 4 are about the ram. Verses 5 through 8 are about the goat. Hello, Tim Wheaton. Good to see you on here tonight. Hey, Patty Stauffer. Hey, Eva. You were napping. Well, glad you woke up. Um, verses 9 through 12 talk about the little horn. Verses 13 and 14 talk about the angels and the length of time that takes place for one of these things. Uh, verses 15 through 19 is the interpretation in general. And then verses uh, 20 to 26 are, are a more in-depth interpretation of the three items or the three characters. And uh, verse 27 is Daniel's response. All right, so Daniel chapter 8 runs parallel with Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7 in those dreams. Um so I'll explain that as we get into it. So let's, let's read verses one, 1 through 4. <laughs> That's correct, James. Not, the <laughs> not Tom Brady. Okay. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, to me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. And the first time was in Daniel chapter 7. I saw in the vision... And it so happened while I was looking that I was in Shushan or, or Susa. Um, he was in Susa. Let me see here. Um, Susha is in Iran. So Daniel, in, in his dream, he was, he was not where he was. He was, he was somewhere... He was somewhere else in his dream. Uh, he was in Babylon, which, which uh, you know, which is, uh, let me make sure I got this right. He is in Babylon, which is present-day Iraq. He found himself in present-day Iran, which is Susha, or Shushan or Susa, the capital in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision that I was by the river Ulai. The river Ulai is a river in that part of the world. I looked it up. <laughs> okay, verse number three. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there standing beside the river was a ram, which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the higher one, the higher one came up last. So he's like on an angle. I saw the ram pushing westward. Okay, so the ram is in uh, the ram is in Iran, going westward and southward. So that's coming towards Jerusalem. Okay, uh, so that no animal could withstand him, nor was there any that could deliver uh, from his hand. But he did according to his will, and he became great. Okay. So, verses 1 through 4 obviously have to do with the ram. And the interpretation of that is found in verse 20. So, let's go there real quick. Verse, uh, verse uh, 
verse 20 says, the ram, okay, so this is, uh, this is, this is Gabriel speaking to Daniel, okay. The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. All right, so. So you have to remember back in Daniel 2 and Daniel 7, there were four empires presented. Uh, the first one was Babylon, uh, presented as the iron in chapter 2 and as the lion in chapter 7. The second one was Medo-Persia. And in the second chapter is presented as, um, I'm sorry, the, the first one was gold, uh, the gold and, and the lion. The second one uh, is gold, uh, silver. And, this, and chapter 8 is, is presented as a bear. So Medo-Persia is the, is the, is the Medo-Persian empire that's going to come into reign. Now, remember, Daniel chapter 8 really belongs in between chapters, I think, 5 and 6 it is. Yeah. So, because at the end of chapter 5, uh, the king of Persia dies, Belshazzar, this king, from 8-1. He dies, and a new king, Darius, uh, begins to reign, but he represents Medo Persia. So that's when the Medo Persian Empire took over. So Daniel is 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 uh, prophesying that the ram will come and will establish its kingdom. It'll just it'll just be full full blown. It'll come from that part of the world. Now remember, the Babylonian Empire was humongous. It incorporated all of that area of the Middle East and Israel, and probably up around Greece as well. Um, I don't know if Africa was included, but it, it, had, it was a huge territory. So it, it, it's understandable that the ram would come from present-day Iran, because that was part of the Babylonian Empire. And it would come to, to, you know, to set up shop, so to speak. And if you remember, each, each empire that came next overcame the one before it. So the Medo-Persian Empire overcame the Babylonian Empire and began to rule over it. Uh, so... Yes. So anyway, so hope you got that. So that's the that's that's the uh, the uh, ram representing the Medo Persian Empire. The two horns represent the Medes and the Persian Persians. One horn was bigger than the other. Uh, the Persians were stronger than the Medes, um, but they were you know they were both ruling at the same time. That's where uh, King Cyrus came from and K King Darius, if you remember that whole thing. Um, Okay. Could someone could someone respond to Tim Wheaton out here just just to write a little note there? I don't know. Someone feels so led to do that. Uh, we'll we'll get into that later at the end. Okay. So then then we got verses five through eight, which uh, refer to the male goat. The male goat. Let's read verse 5 through 8. And, and remember, cha chapter 2 and chapter 7 talk about the, the succeeding empire. So you have Babylon, you have uh, Medo-Persia, you have Greece, then you have Rome. And in the, chapter 2, uh, the Grecian Empire is represented by bronze. Chapter 7, he's represented by a leopard. So we have a, a succeeding order of empires. Uh, each one, the each next one becoming greater. But um, chapter 8, verse 5, As I was considering this, suddenly a male goat came from the west, across the surface of the whole earth, without touching the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Then he came to the man that had the two horns, which I had been standing beside the river and ran at him with furious power. And I saw him confronting the ram. He was moved with rage against him, attacked the ram, and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to withstand him, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled him, and there was no one that could deliver the ram from his hand. Therefore the male goat grew very great but when he became strong, the large horn was broken, 
and in its place and in place of it four notable ones came up toward the four winds of heaven all right so this is the grecian empire if you remember that statue we had in chapter two um or the the uh the uh the four animals in chapter seven um so let, let's go back verse number five um this, this male goat had a notable horn between his eyes. The notable horn, in this case, represents a leader. Um, I, already, I already said that this is representative of the Grecian Empire. Um, and the notable horn is Alexander. Alexander the Great was a, was a famous, powerful leader. And so he's the, uh, he's the notable horn. It came, it came that the ram uh, with the two horns came and uh, they, they had a clash, they clashed, they had war um, and the goat broke the, uh, the ram, let's see, broke the ram's horns. Wait, where are we? Yeah, the, yeah, the goat broke, broke the ram's horns, both of them, meaning he had victory over them. Um, no one could withstand him. And uh, the male, let's see, verse number eight, the male goat grew very great and he became very strong. And then the large, the large horn was broken and in its place four notable horns came out. And historically what happened was Alexander died in early death at age 33. And, and in his kingdom, instead of there being one replacement, there were four replacements. We touched on this in chapter seven because it's mentioned there as well. Uh, so the four horns of verse number eight represent four various leaders or uh, territories that came out of the Grecian Empire that were very strong as well. So instead of one leader, there were now four leaders in that in that area. So let's go over to uh, chapter uh, chapter eight, verses twenty one and twenty two. Now again, this is Gabriel speaking to Daniel. Uh, the male goat and is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is its first king. That's Alexander. As for the broken horn and the, and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. So the four kingdoms will come you know, out of the Grecian Empire, but the power, instead of being in one, will be divided into four. So it will be like one fourth each. So they won't be as powerful as the one was before. So the Grecian Empire then took over the Medo-Persian Empire. We, we talked about this quite a bit in chapter 2 and chapter 7. So, of course, at the time, Daniel probably didn't know, I mean, what's the, you know, he's hearing the word Greece. He probably didn't even know, well, maybe he did know what Greece was at that point. But anyway, they had an empire. He probably didn't realize, he was learning, I guess, from what the angel was saying. All right, so... All right, so, so far, so good. Uh, now, let's go to the uh, verses 9 through 12. And uh, let's see. Verses 9 through 12. And uh, we have a situation here where the little horn is emphasized. Let me get back over here. All right. Uh, out of one of them, out of these, out of one of these kingdoms of, of the four of the Grecian, uh, comes a little horn that grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, toward the glorious land. Now that needs to be uh, discussed. But anyway, so you have to think about this. Out of because we, all, you know, the little horn, the, the horn from chapter seven, can, comes out of the Roman Empire. But remember, when the Roman Empire comes into play down the down the line they will overcome the Grecian Empire. And so out of those four empires that were there in the Grecian Empire, one of those empires will be the new home of the Roman Empire, out of which will come the horn. So it is related in a, in a little bit of a roundabout way. But uh, the little horn will grow exceedingly great um, toward the south and toward the east and toward the glorious land. What is the glorious land? That's Israel. 
Well, let me read you cross-reference uh, Psalm 48. Okay. Um, Psalm 48 in verse number 2. Beautiful, this is a description of, uh, of Jerusalem. Beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole, whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is in her, in her palaces. He is known her, her he, is known, <laughs> he is known as her refuge. Uh, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain, uh, beautiful for situation and so forth. We used to sing that song as well. So praise the Lord for that. Um, hang on one second, everyone, please, if you would. Okay, sorry, I thought I was getting a call, but I'll take care of that later. All right. I'm sorry, hang on one sec. I will take care of that later. Okay, so, okay, Daniel 8. Uh, out, of that, uh, out of that little horn, the little horn grew exceedingly, uh, and it was growing towards Israel. That's never a good thing when uh, another empire is coming towards Jerusalem or Israel. Uh, verse number 10, it grew up uh, to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. This, this needs a lot of explanation here. So remember when I said that this is the law of, of double reference. Um, this is the first reference. Now, Daniel's writing this in 550 BC. He didn't know what was going to come down the, down the line. This was a prophetic word. But verses 9, 10, 11, and 12 uh, have to do with the reign of this person named Antiochus Epiphar, Ep, uh, Epif, Epiphanes. Right. Antiochus Epiphanes. He was a very corrupt, evil ruler that, uh, that came from that part of the world and came to attack and, 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 and destroy uh, Israel and, and uh, Jerusalem. Um, so when we read in verse number 10, this little horn in the first reference, not, not the Antichrist, not yet, but this is symbolic of what the Antichrist will do. The little horn will grow exceedingly powerful, will begin to look towards Israel to attack it. And uh, verse number 10, it says, it grew up to the host of heaven. So that means it got extremely large. It was big and powerful and strong. It cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. Paraphrase meaning he began to destroy the people of Israel. He cast down the host, he cast down the leaders, the stars were the elders, he cast them to the ground, he trampled them, he persecuted uh, Israel. And all this is documented by the way. And this happened in um, 165, I'm, I'm sorry, 168 BC. You can look it up. Antiochus Epiphanes uh, was this corrupt ruler that this is referring to. Verse number 11, he even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host. So he brought himself higher, you know, as high as God, as, as high as Jehovah. And, uh, and by him, the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary of his, of the Lord's sanctuary, was cast down. So what he did was, and, and tell me if this reminds you of anything, but um, he brought in, uh, 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 I don't know if it was a statue, I think it was a statue of the, god, of the god Zeus, 
put that in the Hebrew temple and sacrificed a hog to the God of Zeus in the temple of the Most High God. It was total desecration. And, and this is what this is referring to. Um, he exalted himself as high as the prince of the host. He, he, he wanted to be at, like God. And by him, the daily sacrifices were taken away. And the place of his sanctuary, of the Lord's sanctuary, was cast down. And uh, now, now verse number 12 is very interesting. Because of the transgression, okay, so Israel was sinning again. I mean, they were in Babylon because of their sin. The Lord was dealing with them. But now, some years later, you know, they're, 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 because of their transgression, the Lord is dealing with them again. An army was given over to the, to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices. And he cast truth down to the ground, and he did all this, and he prospered. So what happened was Israel was devastated again decimated. Just like in the Babylonian captivity, Israel is destroyed again at that time, or, or Jerusalem is destroyed again at that time. And so if we go, let's see, if we go there and then look at verses 23 to 26, we can see an interpretation of what I just read. But remember, double reference. So verse 20, 20, uh, 23 says, in the latter time of their kingdom, all right, so now you have to figure out, what's he talking about here? The latter part of whose kingdom? Well, this is the kingdom of the Grecian Empire, although it could have reference to the Roman Empire. But uh, we'll stick with the first part, you know, the first uh, reference, the Grecian Empire. Uh, so this is latter times from where Daniel is. Daniel's in, you know, 550 B.C., this is 168 B.C., so it is in the future for Daniel, so it's later for him. Um, so, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise. That's that king I was talking about, uh, Antiochus. I'll just leave it at that. Um, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully. He shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. So this is about Antiochus as well as the Antichrist, which is coming later down the road. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. Remember how the Antichrist... Uh, is, is reigning and there's total chaos. There, there's murder and there's everything's crazy. So in, in 168 BC, there was a, a shadowing of that that took place. He shall exalt himself in his heart. Remember, the, the Antichrist does that. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, which of course is the Lord. And so that is going to happen. He shall be broken, and he shall be broken without human means. The Lord will destroy him. And the vision of the evenings and the mornings, which uh, was told, is true. Therefore, seal it. Well, that, that's a, just tying up the vision. So anyway, that's, that's the third part, the little horn. So the little horn refers to Antiochus, Epiphanes, as well as to the Antichrist. Okay, so we have the ram, the goat, and the little horn. The ram is Medo-Persia. The goat is Greece. The little horn comes out of that whole thing, and it represents what's going to happen at the end of the uh, Grecian Empire, as well as at the end of time with the Antichrist. Wow, I think, I think we're on this, that pretty good right there. Okay, so... All right. Yeah, verse number 11, uh, the Antichrist wants to make himself equal to God. And so we have a foretaste of that. And, uh, okay. So then, then we have verses 13 and 14. Let's talk about that for a minute. I'm just going to say this rather quickly. Then uh, Daniel says, I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who was speaking, how long will the vision be? concerning the daily sacrifices 
and the transgression of the desolation, the, uh, the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot. And he said to me, 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. The thing there is that he heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that one, how long? So people will say either two angels are speaking or the holy one is in reference to the Lord. I think it might be the Lord. I'll tell you why in a minute. So the holy one is speaking, um, and then the other one says to, to him, how long? So I think the other one is an angel. If you look back at verses 16, it happened when I, Daniel, had seen the vision and was seeking the meaning that suddenly there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. I think this is the one in verse 13 who was speaking, which is the Lord. He saw, he saw one that had the appearance of a man. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the river uh, who called and, and said, so the, the, the man who he saw uh, that looked like the appearance of a man, he, the, that man, who I believe was Christ, said, hey, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So I think verses 15 and 16 refer to verse 13, where the Lord was speaking to Gabriel, which is pretty cool when you think about it. You have a little picture of what goes on in, this, in the supernatural realm. The Lord, always present, always powerful, speaking to the, the, one of the arch, archangels, uh, Gabriel, who we just talked a lot about during Christmas because he was there too, um, you know, telling Gabriel to explain to Daniel what the dream meant. So I think that's really pretty interesting. Uh, so I'm going to stop right there. We're, we'll get into this next week. I'm going to start at verse 13 next week. And I want to look at some of the comments that were made in the, in the remaining few minutes that we have. I uh, hope that was interesting for you. Um, all righty. So let's see. Let's see that, Sandy. I'm going to be calling Joanne right now in a few minutes. Um, yeah, Tim Wheaton. Uh, okay, thank you, James, for letting Tim know about all that. Um, so, you know, unless the Lord intervenes, our, our brother's going home to be with the Lord. And, um, you know, on a spiritual note, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Uh, on a personal note, you know, Gary, Gary was a very lovable guy. Um, I felt close to Gary because you know, he was involved with the worship team. And because of that, he and I spent a lot of time together over the last couple of years working on music and trying to you know, come up with different arrangements and stuff. Uh, very talented, very gifted, great sense of humor. He, he, uh, I, I love the fact that he was Jewish and he liked to maintain his Jewishness. Uh, and he had, he had a certain sense of humor that included being Jewish. <laughs> and um, just a great guy, great guy. So I want to close out tonight by praying again for Gary. And, um, you know, praying for Joanne as well. All right. So uh, before I do that, let me just say, I don't know if I said it earlier, our business meeting is not this Friday. It'll be February the 4th because uh, there's been so much sickness floating around. We decided to put it off a week. So February the 4th is our annual business meeting at the church. Um, it will not be uh, live streamed. So, OK, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word tonight. Lord, we started out by saying all scripture is inspired by God. It's profitable for doctrine, for correction, for guidance, for reproof, so that the man or woman of God may be complete or mature. So Lord, Daniel chapter 8 <clears throat> really stretches us, but we see history unfolding before our eyes, and uh, we see history within history with that double reference uh, application. But Lord, thank you for Daniel chapter 8. And uh <clears throat> Let us be ready, Lord, should the rapture occur. Let us be ready. And we thank you for that. Thank you for that.
that awareness that your coming is soon. Lord, we do pray for Gary. Oh, Lord Jesus, touch Gary. Bring healing to his body. We pray against cancer. We pray against brain cancer, liver cancer, kidney cancer, whatever else is going on. Lord, if we could say, Lord, uh, we speak to that. We speak to that sickness to be gone in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Christ over him. Lord, as they take out the uh, ventilator, um, it'll totally be in your hands, 100%. We pray for a miracle. We pray for a miracle to happen. But Lord, we also give it to you and pray that your will would be done. Lord, this reminds me when Lord Jesus, you were in the garden. You were praying, Father, if there's any way that this cup could pass from me, let it pass from me. But nonetheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Lord, let your will be done regarding Gary Feldman. And whatever the outcome is, Lord, we pray for Joanne to be comforted, to be encouraged, to be healed of her health problems. We pray for your provision to be upon her in every aspect. And we pray for Gary's family as well to be comforted by your Holy Spirit. Lord, perhaps through his life and death and this situation, uh, they also would come to know you as their personal Messiah. So Lord, we leave Gary in your hands uh, this, uh, this particular evening as he's in the hospital in New Jersey. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, and send your angels to be with him, comfort him. Uh, bless him, O oh God. May your blessing be upon him. Be with the doctors and nurses as they minister to him. Let them know exactly what to do. So Lord, thank you for tonight. Let everyone have a good evening, a good sleep, and let us wake up refreshed in your presence tomorrow, Lord. Thank you. And this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. All right. Hey, Millie Merced, good to see you. All right. I'm going to, you know, I keep forgetting to put on the exit video. I just remembered, so I'm going to put it on right now. So there'll be some music playing for a few minutes. If you want to write something down, you can do that. Uh, if you want to sign out, that's fine too. But anyway, uh, God bless you. Text me, email me, call me if we could do anything for you. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday talk, 12 o'clock tomorrow. God bless you. Love you. Bye. Oh, James Carter. The closing video is locked. Can you tell me what to do really quick? James Carter. Calling James Carter. I can't get the video to play. I'm going to wait here a minute, folks. Danica, nudge James. Draw. Click the lock icon next to it. Yes. James, it won't unlock. It won't unlock. I see the lock. But it won't unlock. What am I going to do? Well, I'll put on the intro video. I'll do that for, for tonight. All right. God bless. Bye.